This is probably the most historic election in 40 years since Harold Washington was elected in 1983. And there are three reasons for that. One reason is that the city of Chicago is again in crisis. It's in crisis because thousands of people are out in the street homeless, because thousands of people are unable to get food that they need, because thousands of people are unable to get the health care that they need, because thousands of people are unable to get the education that they need, because thousands of people are unable to survive or thrive in the way that people in the richest country in the world ought to be able to thrive. That's the situation that faces the people of Chicago today. And that's what is forcing its way into the electoral campaigns, regardless of, of whether the candidates themselves are on one side or another of these, of these major issues. So that's point number one. Point number two is that one third of the city council seats are up for re-election without an incumbent. That means that so many of the incumbents have retired for various reasons. A couple of them are running for mayor, but a number of them are under indictment for corruption. City of Chicago is known for that. And many of the candidates who are attempting to claim these offices are fighting because they're attempting to bring to the fore the questions that we raised initially under point number one, under those means of survival. Number three, we have a mayor who has failed to carry out all of her promises. One of those promises, one of the most important promises or most immediate promises was to resolve the problem of housing by a retail transfer tax, a resale transfer tax, sorry, in which the, uh, the, some of the highest uh, cost housing, highest cost office developments that were sold in the city of Chicago, a portion of that money would be taxed and turned over to, to house the homeless. That has never happened. The mayor of Chicago has also failed around dispersing the COVID funds to actually help the people of the city of Chicago, whether it's in the education field, whether it's in public health, uh, and has failed miserably in terms of actually uh, allow, uh, allowing for the education program in Chicago to go ahead with remote learning properly. She actually provoked a strike of the teachers of Chicago. So we're in a situation where we have some real possibilities here in terms of electing people to office who can fight for the interests of the working class. And we also have the possibility of building a movement that's based on those fights around the basic needs of the people that can carry on far beyond the election itself. That's one of the main questions that faces us as we head toward the election, is what kind of a movement will be built during the election campaign, and what kind of a movement can carry on afterwards, which will be a necessary uh, effort in order to carry out those demands which are politically being raised. All of this is why you should attend this event on February 9th, because it is at that point when people will be coming together, revolutionaries like yourselves will be coming together to talk about not only what kind of a movement we can build within the election campaign, but how do revolutionaries work within elections and what kind of a movement will exist afterwards. We need that kind of discussion. We need that kind of strategy because we need that kind of action.